If you've been keeping up with the recent GLP wars going on in the Arbitrum ecosystem, you've probably seen some of the hype on Twitter regarding Jones Dow's most recent GLP vaults. Their new JUSDC and JGLP vaults are supposed to take over the GLP wars, with the highest yield vaults available on the market. What are the GLP wars? The GLP wars are a reference to the competing protocols trying to create the highest yield bearing vaults using GMX's GLP pool. To set some context, the GLP pool is one of the largest yield bearing liquidity pools on the entire Arbitrum network. This pool is used on the GMX protocol to offer users leverage for their perp trades. The GLP pool is made up of an index of blue chip cryptocurrencies along with a few stablecoins to ensure stability of its value. It currently has a USD notional value of $411 million staked. By staking GLP tokens, users get exposure to fees earned by the protocol from users making trades as well as extra or less APY depending on how profitable traders are. One thing to remember is that APR from the GLP pool is earned in ETH. With base APRs of up to 20%, it's clear that investing into GLP can be extremely lucrative for people looking to farm some yield. This is where the GLP wars come in. By using different strategies to manage risk and leverage on yield farming positions, users are able to maximize their yield potential while managing what kind of risk tolerance they want to have exposure to. Through different combinations of these two factors, we come to the 30% APR on the JGLP vault and 10% APR on the Jones USDC vault. Now, to be responsible, I must leave a disclaimer that these vaults will not necessarily always maintain this level of yield. Some of the actual risk factors for investing into these vaults include stablecoin DPEG events on USDC, which is a key factor in bringing you the APR that you see, smart contract hacks, and large market movements. If you're cognizant of all these risks and would still like to explore the vaults, I will quickly break down the vault architectures so you can better understand how they produce this yield. Let's start with the JUSDC vault as its mechanics are much simpler. The JUSDC vault basically serves as liquidity for the JGLP farm to leverage users' positions. By depositing USDC into the JUSDC vault, your funds will be converted into JUSDC, which is then used by the JGLP vault to give JGLP farmers leverage positions. In return, you will receive a portion of the ETH rewards they farm with that leveraged position. It's that simple, and it's the reason why you see such a large APY on the JGLP vault. If that doesn't satisfy your risk appetite, you can then pair the JUSDC with ETH on Camelot decks and form fees for providing liquidity for even more potential gains. Now let's move on to JGLP. Users have a choice of a basket of different tokens which they can use to deposit into the JGLP vault. The JGLP vault will then take their deposits and convert them into GLP, which is staked on the GMX protocol. Before they do that though, the vault will borrow USDC from the JUSDC pool and buy GLP in turn leveraging their position to ensure higher yield. Using a smart leverage mechanism, the JGLP vault is able to ensure that users' positions are not liquidated. The vault then simply farms the GLP pool on GMX and periodically returns gains to JUSDC LPs. If you want to increase your exposure to risk even more, users can pair JGLP with USDC and earn fees from LPing for Camelot decks. One thing to keep in mind is that the amount of liquidity in the JUSDC vault directly affects how much liquidity can be deposited into the JGLP vault. As liquidity increases in the JUSDC vault, more room in the JGLP vault is created. Another detail to mention is that both of these vaults include an auto-compounding feature, so users do not need to go back and restake rewards. Auto-compounding will also let you withdraw your position at any time. There is one caveat for users staking in the JUSDC vault, which is that before withdrawing from the pool, users must signal their intention and wait 24 hours before the withdrawal can occur. That's about it. If you're still curious about some of the more in-depth mathematics behind how these strategies function, I'll leave a link to the Jonesdow docs covering them more in-depth in the description. Thanks for watching, and stay safe out there, Anons.